Let's take a look at example problem 3.1. In this problem here, we have a single degree of freedom system that has an undamped natural frequency of 5 radians per second and a damping factor of 20%. It is given the initial conditions u0 is equal to 0 and v0 is equal to 20 inches per second. They ask us to determine the damped natural frequency and the expression for the motion of the system for when time is greater than 0. So now that we've had a chance to read through that problem statement, understand what they've given us, what they're asking us to solve for, the next part is to create our setup page. So I have up top the lecture 3.1 from ME270, example problem 3.1, a single degree of freedom system. In the problem statement, they tell us that our natural frequency omega sub n is equal to 5 radians per second, our damping factor of 20%, so we have our damping factor here of 0.2, our u naught is 0, and our v naught, our initial velocity, is 20 inches per second. So, what do they want us to solve for? Well, they want us to solve for the damped natural frequency and find the expression for the motion of the system for a time greater than 0. We're going to make a couple assumptions. We're going to assume single degree of freedom system, and we're going to assume the initial conditions are given to us, which we put up here in our givens. Now that we've completed our setup page, we can reference back for all the given information what they're asking us to solve for. We now want to start our solution. With our solution, we want to come up with our method or our governing equation that we're going to use to start this. So in this case here, our governing equation is given to us as equation 3.28a, and that's on page 63. And this tells us that our omega sub d is equal to our omega sub n times the square root of 1 minus our damping factor, and it has units of radians per second. So where our omega sub d is going to be the damped circular natural frequency, our omega sub n is our natural frequency, and our damping factor is given to us as 0.2 in our problem here. So known values, damping factor, 0.2, omega sub n, 5 radians per second. So we can take this given information, plug back into our governing equation here, and what we end up with is our omega sub d is equal to 5 times the square root of 1 minus 0 0.2 squared, do out the math there and we find that omega sub d is equal to 4.899 units of radians per second. So the next thing we want to do is try to find our damped period and our damped frequency. So we can do this from the equation on 3.28b from our textbook. So from this here, you can see here, okay, we have t sub d is equal to 2 pi over our omega d. We now have a value for omega d, so we can plug in here and back out our period. What we're really looking for is our damp frequency, and we realize that frequency is 1 over our period. So our damp frequency is equal to 1 over our, our damp period here. Units, period in seconds, frequency in 1 per second or hertz. So that information there, you can then plug in here f sub d is equal to our omega d over 2 pi. We flip our TD over right here because it's 1 over TD. Plug in our known value of our omega D is given to us as 5 radians per second divided by 2 pi. So now we can get our damped frequency, our F sub D here, 0 0.7792 hertz. Round it up, F sub D is equal to 0 0.78 hertz. Now with this information here, what we can do is we can go to equation 3.33 on, on page 63 of our textbook. We come up with this relationship ship here for our use of T. So our u sub t is equal to v naught, which we have as a given initial condition, over our omega d that we just solved for, e to the negative, this is our damping frequency right here, times our omega sub n, our natural frequency there, times time, times the sine of our omega sub d, which again we've solved, we have a value for, times our time there. So we have values for a lot of these terms here that we can plug into this equation to reduce and simplify. So now we rewrite that equation on the top of our next page here so it's easy to plug into. And from below it, we write down everything we know 
we either solved for already or was given in the problem statement. So we have our initial condition here, our V naught, our initial velocity is equal to 20 inches per second. Uh, our damping factor here is 0 0.2. Our omega sub D, we've solved for to be 4.899 radians per second. Our omega sub N is given to us as 5 radians per second there. So if we take all that information, we plug back into that governing equation up here for U of T, we find now we put this in, U of T is equal to 20 divided by 4.899, there's our 20, there's our 4.899, our V naught and our omega D, E to the negative 0 0.2, which you can see from here, and we have our 5 value here, and our omega N times time, times the sine of, there we go, there's our 4.889 right here, times time there, reduce and simplify this, we end up with the use of t is equal to 4.08 e to the negative t times sine of 4.899 t. And units would be in inches. So the next thing I want to do here is to plot that u of t function from time from 0 to 3 here. So what I can do now say that my time interval is going to be 0 0.1, come down through, and we can change it if we find there's not enough points there. And our use of t is given by this expression that I now type out in code for Excel. So this is by 4.08 times e to the negative a2, which is our time right there, times the sine of our 4.899 times time over here. So that's our u of t expression that we just solved for. I plugged into MATLAB, carried it down through for all these time points. All I could do is go over and insert, select a plot there. So that's all I've done there to create this plot here. Labeled it from there. On my x-axis down here, I have time going from 0 to 3, 3.5 in this case here. I only plotted up to 3. And u sub t from negative 2 up to a value of 3 here. We can see I've plotted up to 4 so we can see the whole curve. So all of this here now gives us our plot for our u of t from 0 to a time of three.